Welcome back to NTV's Good Life. We've had just a fun day getting behind the scenes of all the Hollywood bigwigs right from here in Nebraska. And mm -hmm. of course, we just did mock screen tests with some UNK students. And now we're going to listen to the judges' feedback. I'm certainly glad you said from here in Nebraska because when I was uh, being uh, all auditioned, if you will, for, to be in the programming department at ABC, why uh, Leonard Goldberg, who was the head of programming said I I, I I never known anyone from Nebraska before and then I said oh I'm so sorry you never got a chance to meet Marlon Brando or Fred Astaire or Henry Fonda and I went about there John <laughs> Carson and Dick Cavett oh okay 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 I got it I got it I got it uh, and of course Dick Cavett always used to say that because we we're so creative in Nebraska because every fall we burn the fields which <laughs> I think anybody over the age of, what, 20 understands that, you know, or under the age of 20, most likely. No, th this is uh, the worst part of the whole deal for me in terms of being a producer, because I always produce my own stuff after very shortly on as being a writer, because I was always kind of disappointed with the way things showed up uh, on camera. So I wanted to be part of helping the baby walk or die, one of the two. <laughs> no pun intended in terms of Juno goes. But, I mean, these poor actors, they come in, and some of you guys are trying terrific at, at cold readings and other people you know, I suck at cold readings I need that uh, uh, and some people come in totally memorized come doing shtick and they do something with a pillow and with the with you know, oh yeah this is a mystery show or whatever they'll do all kinds of things other people can be catatonic and they have soft <laughs> and they don't know what the hell I'm gonna do and why I'm gonna do it uh, I, I I've I, I was telling uh, the professor here that I knew there was a good theater department, and uh, and I can see that you guys are uh, products of a really good theater department. You guys are very good. You guys needed, uh, uh, you really needed for this particular opportunity, you needed to uh, memorize all this stuff, you know, because believe me, I remember actors would say, let me have the slides, let me have the slides, I'll, give, me, give me a half hour. Okay, and then we, they'd be outside, and so you go outside of a producer's office, and you got actors facing up and down, looking at the lines, or or at least if they're going to use this, be on script, why well, at least they'll have enough knowledge as a touchdown and read what it is. So, so when you get this kind of an opportunity, whether it's here or someplace else in the world specifically, try to get memorized or be close enough to the script so you don't have to spend too much time with your eyes down on the script and you give eye contact to whoever you're performing with because we want to see how you perform. We also, uh, I can see some of you guys are uh, are closer to it than a couple of you guys are close to it but uh, uh, you want to get as close as you can to the material and you want to be able to say at the end of the reading and uh, you were this is not the context good. can I give you another way can I, can, I, can I be angry? Can I be angry? Was angry good? Anger good for it? Yeah, no, no. Uh, oh, or, or you see, can I be embarrassed or can I be just, just totally, totally catatonic with exactly the way I feel in the same lines? And it was written by a fabulous writer named Cody Diablo. This was literally one of her first scripts that she had done. And of course you can tell by the, because you all know teenagers, that's the way they talk, and my God, that's why they're like, Patrick, they're going to let me to go to Cabo San Lucas now? Oh, my God, I can tell it's going to come. I can feel it coming. And then, of course, the, all the, as you guys can tell, the material was terrific, and I'm glad you, you all picked that scene, uh, those scenes in which to do. But uh, you're, you're all... You're just really all on your way. I'm glad. Are all of you uh, juniors, seniors, or some of you freshmen uh, here? You're a senior? A sophomore? A sophomore? Ah, okay, okay. I can tell you're so mature, you know, these other <laughs> punks, you know. At <laughs> any rate, you guys did a great job. I'm really glad to be here, and I, I just, just keep on going. Don't stop now. Lonnie? Thank you. I think, for me, I think you guys did wonderful just to come out and do a cold read is so difficult. Uh, it, for me, as an actor and director, I get exactly what you're doing, so... I think understanding the content of your material is the best, but it's a cold read, so you never, sometimes you don't get the length that you need. And the reaction is the most important, you know. I guess I say that because if you really listen to the other person, sometimes you can mess up the line and then it'll, it'll come out when you ad lib it. And then all of a sudden the director's mind changes and goes, hmm, that was interesting. I like the reaction. So just knowing the content of the material and reacting to each other really intently is my. 
Yeah, let me say one more thing that I, I think is really important for actors to, to understand. I used to sit in screening rooms and I used to look at the screen tests back in the days when uh, we did it as a group because we didn't have video VCR machines. And we had, the, we had two projectors going in the projection booth and uh, uh, we had one producer, uh, one uh, projectionist named Tom. And we look at see a screen test and the same, the, now this is the same material in every one of the screen tests. Uh, and uh, then we would go like, uh -huh, oh, okay, Tom, next. And then Tom would switch over to the other reel. Now, sometimes we would let the whole thing keep on going and going and going and going. And we'd sit there just almost caught up, not almost, definitely caught up in what the actor was doing. Why? Because the actor understood what the line, our director, professor here, contends, understands what the lines are. A lot of that has to do with education. And so a lot of people say, how do I come to Hollywood? I say, get a great education. Understand the classics. Understand what Pirandello means. It's not just some place in Italy. It's a marvelous uh, a writer here in the 16th century. Understand Shakespeare. Understand Tennessee Williams. Understand David Mamet. And go through and go through the classics, not only in motion pictures, but very specifically in theater, because theater is the performance art, it's the basics of all performance art, and so that mind, so you can't be too smart, you can't be, Pam, my wife uh, will tell you that I read six newspapers a day, I, and I just, I'm, I guess I think it's part of being in Nebraska, and I'm afraid somebody will know something that I don't know, and I want to be sure to be up on top of it so I can make some sort of a halfway intelligence, but, but be as smart as you can be. Hey, that's money in your emotional and creative and acting <coughs> back. <coughs> Professor. We go. have about 15 seconds, oh. so that's your <laughs> fine. Right. So just tell him, Dr. Omlin. Hey, well, professor, we professors can't open our mouths in 15 seconds. <laughs> Hi, guys. Here we go. We're leaving. Oh, good job.